Hello everyone, welcome back to It's Tech Time. Today we will cover setting up your own proxy server using ShadowSocks. So first we need to set up a host server to store ShadowSocks on or to run ShadowSocks on. And this could be a computer in your house, the computer you're using or some computer in your corner. We're going to use a VPS. So what we're going to do is we're going to go create. I'm going to select droplet. I'm going to leave the region def default. I'm going to choose the most recent LTS version of Ubuntu. And I'm going to go for regular SSD and all the way down to their $4 a month. Then I'm going to give it a host name of Shadow Socks. And I'm going to click create. Once it comes up, we're going to copy the IP address. We're going to open a terminal. And now we're going to SSH into the IP address we just copied. We're going to confirm the fingerprint. And then we're going to run a quick sudo apt update. Now we're going to need Docker and Docker Compose installed in order to run Shadow Socks. I'm going to run through this really quick, quickly, but if you need a more detailed walkthrough of how to install Docker and Docker Compose, you can visit my website that will be listed down below. Now that we have Docker and Docker Compose installed, we'll need to set up a directory tree in order to make it easier to manage all the different files and settings that go along with Shadow Socks if you want to get more advanced into it in the future. So I ran make directory dash p, which means it's going to make these directories if they're not there. And I did fig slash shadow socks. So now if I did a ls, I'll see fig and I do a ls fig, I'll see shadow socks. And so we'll change directory to fig slash shadow socks. And we'll run this curl command to pull the official Docker image from GitHub. So if we do ls, we'll see a docker compose file now. And I'm going to cat the basic docker compose file for shadow socks. And it's going to default to these to this port address and it's going to default to this password. And if that's good for you and for this example, we're going to just go ahead and start it with docker compose, but you can change those for your environment if you need to. Or run docker compose up dash d so it runs in the background and you'll see it pull the image and i'll run a docker ps to make sure it's actually running now depending on what version machine you're wanting to run this on you'll need to download the correct client for it you can get this off their github project i will give you the specific link on my website which will again will be listed down below for my example i'm going to be using windows so I'm going to click download for Windows. I'm going to download the latest source file. And I'm going to store it in my downloads folder. And now I need to extract everything. And now I'll run the application. So it's going to need some information before I can officially start it. It's, first, it's going to want to know the server IP. I'll have to go back and copy it because I don't have it memorized. And we did the default port address of 8388. And it's going to want a password. So I need to go back to my SSH terminal. And I'll cap my Docker Compose to see what password I gave it. And I'm going to copy it and come back over here and paste it. Change the encryption method, which is using AES256. Now I'll click apply, click okay. Okay, so this is my current IP address of where I'm locally at. So I need to go to the system tray, right click on shadow socks, go to system proxy and click global. Once you click global, it will turn blue showing that you do have a successful connection to your server. So now if we refresh this, and now shows me as being in California, which is nowhere near where I am currently. 
So this is a pretty cool way to kind of hide your IP address if you're wanting to avoid websites logging you visiting or knowing exactly where you're located. And also having this proxy in between you and the website gives you a shield against any malicious activity that may occur. So if you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to me through the comment section down below or on my Discord page. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with anyone who might benefit from learning about online privacy. Thanks for watching and as always, stay curious, stay secure, and I'll see you in the next video.